There were some technical glitches. I mean, plenty of technology firms see this, but do you think that in any way hinders the enthusiasm behind this product? Uh, not necessarily at first. I mean, I think that uh, a lot of times you launch a service like this, especially one with the potential for the popularity that the Disney Plus service has, uh, you're bound to potentially have some, some glitches. I think early on, you probably have some frustrated users. Hopefully you work through that quickly. And in terms of a market sign, we hope that that means that the, the demand is very, very strong for the service right now. If nothing else, it gets people talking on Twitter and perhaps gets more people to sign up to see what all the um, excitement is about. We understand that some 19 million Verizon customers will be able to get Disney Plus for free for the first year. Does it matter how Disney builds up the, the number of subscribers, whether it's through partnerships with Verizon or organically with people paying $7 per month? Um, in the grand scheme of things, I would say no. Um, it, it, you know, it, it does matter over time, but right now I feel like the potential audience for this product is enormous. So the important thing at the start is to get folks in the door. And remember, those Verizon subscribers, Verizon-based subscribers, will still be paying subscribers to Disney. We believe it will be at a discounted price. But really, Disney's playing the long game here. I think they have a great product. They think they have a great product. It's about really getting people using that product, becoming part of their lives. Then they get pricing power over time, as well as some of, as well as, as some of the other benefits that they can receive from, from having those dedicated consumers. Clearly the United States is lapping it up. Netflix has done so well because of the international growth story as well. Mm -hmm. How much do you expect this demand that seems to be unhinged today in the US and as it goes live in Canada and the Netherlands today, how do you expect that to be replicated abroad? Sure. So we think that that the U.S. will be the st will be the primary source of subscribers for this service in the near term. Over time, we think that Disney Plus, so focused specifically on the Disney branded service, we think there's going to be a large appetite for that on a global basis as well. We look at the popularity of the company's films on a global basis as something of an indicator for what the built-in audience could be, the type of demand you can see on a global basis. We think that's incredibly attractive. We think that markets outside the U.S. have a faster growth rate in the number of broadband subscribers, mobile subscribers that ultimately can become streaming service subscribers. And one other thing I'd point out, we're only talking about Disney Plus right now. Remember, Disney owns virtually all of and controls all of Hulu, and we haven't really even started talking about the international opportunity for that service yet, which we think is a big part of the Disney value that's underappreciated.